A couple months back I saw this video by the fantastic Simply Sark, where he demonstrates this neat little secret feature with villagers. You see, if you're holding an item the villager currently wants to trade, for example, this dude really wants to trade iron ingots, when I approach him with an iron ingot, he holds out an emerald. And he is jumping at joy at the opportunity to engage in capitalistic ventures. Believe me friend, I know the feeling. But here is the trick, when he holds out the emerald, it actually makes a silent sound, that we can't hear, but it can be detected by skulk sensors and, most importantly, give off a redstone signal, meaning we can activate different redstone circuitry depending what's in our hotbar. And you should all know the drill by now, I find out about an obscure game mechanic and I chug away trying to think of how I can use it, and this time I landed on Guitar Hero. So this is how I built it. First off I made an area for the player to be surrounded by five different villagers, which all trade for different items. This means when I place the different items in my hotbar, I can use the numbers on my keyboard to quickly change between hotbar slots and activate different redstone pulses. This is how we will play our note, just like the real game. For example, I hold out a scoot, this activates this villager, and that will be our green note. Likewise, if I hold out a carrot, that's our orange note, or B for red, or diamond for blue, and gold for yellow. Yes, that's the one I picked. But how are we going to represent the notes and the physical guitar, the, the game? How do we represent that? You see, my initial thought for representing the notes falling was using redstone lamps. But really, when you try to put that in practice, it doesn't really work. Trying to cram all the redstone to light up the lamps, eh, to be honest, I hate using redstone lamps just for this very reason. As well as I saw this video by another fantastic redstone YouTuber, Squibble, where he talks about the advantages of using analog displays versus, you know, the rubbish lamp ones. And ever since then, I have become an analog pilled anti lamp maxing Sigma Chad. <laughs> But the point being, is we are going to represent the notes falling in game by concrete powder falling in game. I know, it seems great. But let's be honest, compared to redstone lamps, concrete powder falling, th this just looks way cooler. Plus you have the color, like come on, obvious choice. But how do we detect when notes need to be hit? Well, what we can do is we can have a line of observers with string in front of them. Now what's strange about this is you don't actually need tripwire hooks. Observers will detect string if it's directly in front of them. I would expect how this works, but I would need a consent form from your doctor. We then take that redstone pulse from the falling powder and see if the correct villager was activated at any point throughout its duration, meaning did we hit the note or not. Now that sounds pretty simple to implement, but in reality it's, it's actually quite harder than you think. My hit detection design was the bulk of the work in terms of time and went through several iterations until I arrived at this one. And now we come to a point where I need to make a bit of a confession, an apology maybe. You see, a couple months back, I made a YouTube short making fun of quasi-connectivity, where I even ended it asking for it to be removed from the game. And since then, I've learned a lot more about Redstone. This design here uses the weird quasi-connectivity in like four different spots. So I guess I should take this as a lesson to actually learn what I'm talking about before making a YouTube video about it. But now that we know when a hit has been hit, or a hit has not been hit and thus a miss, we can then connect it to these lovely LED counters, which I've used in a couple of my mini games previously, but I don't think I've ever properly given credit. This design is by Maizuma, Maizuma, who has pretty much dedicated himself to making a bunch of cool LED counters. So if this one's not to your fancy, oh my, you, you have a selection. But now comes the interesting part, because how do we actually program music and notes into Guitar Hero? So to continue the tradition of this basically being a bunch of stolen redstone bits from a bunch of different people, this design came from Mr. Kowalski. I first saw this in a great video where he talks about this program map printer. Basically what he does is uses redstone music discs. You see, each time you play a music disc in a jukebox, it gives off a different comparator power level. For example, 13 gives off power level 1, while blocks gives off power level 3. What this means is we can then run the signals through a red coder to get distinct outputs from music discs. So what we basically created is a form of data storage using music discs. Now what we can use this for is that to program our notes. So what I have here is a shortcut box full of a bunch of different music discs, and each one in sequence represents the next next note in the song. So for example, this shulker here will play notes 1, 3, 1, 3, 2, 4, 2, 4. 
We can then feed these data shulkers into this music disc reader, also made by Mr. Kowalski, to output the signals for us. I could have made my own, but, you know, it was already here, and you know what they say. Why reinvent the wheel when you can just steal it? So that's most of the logic for Guitar Hero right there. We have a way for players to play notes, detect notes, and program notes for a song. What are we missing? You see, when the powder drops, what do we do with it? Because eventually, we're going to run out. In the first version of this, I just had some slabs and had the powder being destroyed, and then I just had a huge storage skyring off into the sky, and I just said, eh, let's just hope we don't run out. But then my good friend Bishop came to me, he said, Gurg, I've made this fantastic powder recycler. So we snapped it onto this design. Now when the powder falls down, it gets sent through this loop where it gets launched up by slime blocks all the way back up to the top and then launched back onto the stack. So what this means is we will effectively never run out of notes. From there, we just added the last few final touches to the minigame, such as adding an on and an off button, an ability to change the tempo, and of course, making it look all swanky. And of course, I wouldn't be able to end this video without a beautiful demonstration. So here is my rendition of Pig Step, played on my version of Minecraft Guitar Hero. And I must warn you, I'm actually not very good at my own game, so don't hold it against me. <laughs> Now it's time to address a couple of concessions, as my design is far from perfect. For example, you can only play one note at a time, nor is there any hold notes or star power. And if you want to play the same note twice in a row, it's a massive hassle, as you need to switch between two things very quickly. Hard to do. But despite all this, I still think it's pretty damn neat. So if you'd like a world download or a schematic for this and a whole bunch of other stuff I've made, as always, it can be found for free in my Discord. A link to which should be provided somewhere on this video. Thanks for watching, and join me next time when I smash my head into a wall.